Hello, I'm James O'Hagan, and this is Business Line, your monthly business barometer brought to you from Dubai. The Chinese economy reportedly saw a rapid recovery in the second quarter of 2020. That's after a significant contraction in the first quarter. But while Beijing is buoyed by the bounce back, worsening relations with Washington are looming since President Donald Trump floated the idea of an economic decoupling. Nightlife returning to Beijing and the opening of China Next, China's Nasdaq-style registration-based capital market system. All signs of an economy on the rebound. China's GDP reportedly rose 3.2% in the second quarter of 2020 after the inevitable contraction in Q1. That thrashed analysts' expectations. During the epidemic, we suffered from less interaction and entertainment activities here. This market brings back our face-to-face -face interaction with consumers, which is a big help for our spenders. I notice that the industry's spring is coming back and businesses here are recovering. But as the US gears up for this year's presidential election, President Trump has been reigniting trade tensions with China. There's been no country that's ripped us off more than China. China, would you decouple? That's a very interesting question, because so far we've gotten nothing out of China. I was going to ask you that. What do we get out of We get nothing. All we do is lose money. Would you ever just decouple, not do business with China? Because, you know, we don't have to. And what's the answer? Well, it's something that if they don't treat us right, I would certainly think. Meanwhile, the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs has been addressing itself to both Republicans and Democrats in Washington, perhaps an indication that they believe Donald Trump will suffer a defeat in the November elections. China hopes the Democrat and Republican parties in the U.S. can view China and Sino-U.S. relations in an objective way and work with China to advance Sino-U.S. relations featuring coordination, cooperation and stability, which serves the common interests of the people in China, the U.S. and the whole world. Whether or not a decoupling between the world's two trading giants is even feasible, one thing looks likely. Whoever sits in the Oval Office in 2021 will have to iron out bilateral trade relations from a weaker position and with an emboldened Beijing. Dubai-based marketing agency Create Media recently ranked among the world's top 50 fastest-growing marketing agencies by US publication Adweek. I met with founder Tom Otten to discuss the rapidly evolving world of social media and how sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. So Create Media started around 2010, when we first started up. Um, we had our first big client coming in and we were presenting a website to them. Uh, it was a client that we shouldn't really have been working with. They were, they were way out of our league. And we were just, uh, just going that first move into our first uh, actual premises. So I kept delaying, I kept delaying. Finally, we got them to come in. But we moved in and we hadn't had the electricity connected. I phoned a friend and said, is there a large battery that I could plug a computer into? I put it underneath the boardroom table and did the full presentation there. Whilst I had, at the time, we had about 15 people in the agency. Um, we had them sat around on computers with no electricity, pretending to work. Who are some of the clients that you're working with at the moment? Uh, so we work with the likes of Visit Dubai, part of Dubai Tourism. Uh, we work with Expo 2020, handling all of their social media. We work with Emirates Airline on a project basis. We've done some really fun stuff, a really cool piece with, uh, with Spider-Man, actually, uh, for the Far From Home movie that came out. One sector that wasn't too negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic was digital marketing. How have you fared? Um, so it's been a roller coaster. Uh, to start off with, we lost a few clients that were negatively affected quite significantly. But outside of that, we've seen growth. Last year, we grew headcount by 91%. Um, we're on track this year, we'll probably grow around about uh, 50 to 60 percent headcount again. Um, so, you know, the growth has been rapid over the last three to four years. Adweek in the US, they have the fastest growing agencies awards. Uh, we ranked 43rd on that um, out of every agency globally. Um, we were the only agency in the Middle East on that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm confident that we'll make that list again this year. How has COVID-19 affected change across the digital landscape? We've already seen digital transformation and digital change happening. COVID has just accelerated it. In the last, I'd say, three, four, five months, we're seeing like three years of the trajectory that we were planning in January has happened literally in just a quarter. There's so much um, happening in the news cycle that we're helping a lot of those government departments craft that story, tell that story, build out the strategy. Um, working with Visit Dubai, for example, with Dubai Tourism, how do we show that Dubai is open for business? How do we show that Dubai is open for tourism? Yes, we still need to sell the dream of travel, but at the same time, we also need to make sure that we're focusing on safety, on protocol, on 
on when people arrive at the right the way through the airport through to the hotel how do you reach younger consumers like generation z a younger generation doesn't have time for the glossy picture let's look at like tiktok for example there's nothing more raw than tiktok it's you know it's 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 people creating short form video content often in their own homes but some brands are just not quite understanding it's not about taking that same message and putting it on t a tiktok ad for example just because that's where the younger audience is it's about understanding the psyche of the people when they're on that platform what they want to see what they want to connect with and crafting that story in the same way the discovery of a large natural gas reserve off the Black Sea coast could alleviate Turkey's economic woes. And though unlikely to propel it to the status of regional energy hub, it could lessen its reliance on Iran and Russia for energy, whilst giving its economy a welcome boost. After plummeting to record lows this summer, the Turkish lira enjoyed some well-needed respite in August after President Recep Tayyip Erdogan announced the discovery of about 320 billion cubic metres of natural gas off the coast of the Black Sea. Turkey now has the strength, will and resources to stand on its own two feet without the need to take shelter in anyone's shadow, in any field. Our aim is to submit Black Sea gas for use by our nation by 2023. If confirmed as recoverable, this gas discovery is certainly welcome news for a country whose energy imports last year totaled around 35 billion euros. But experts say 2023 for extraction is setting the bar a bit high. The timeline of 2023 strikes me as overly ambitious. Perhaps the best historical examples are from Israel, who you know discovered two massive fields uh, in the last 20 years. Both of those took over 10 years to bring online. The discovery comes as tensions between NATO allies, Turkey and Greece, are running high over oil and gas exploration in disputed waters in the eastern Mediterranean. This find comes in the Black Sea, where Turkey has already delimited its borders with, you know, its Black Sea neighbors. Uh, and it can just, you know, be free to develop it on its own. So this will be, you know, a Turkish source of gas that does put Turkey's economy on a better footing. Uh, and will help it reduce its, its current account deficit. Though our energy needs must transition quickly to renewables, in the shorter term, this discovery gives the Turkish economy a lifeline at a time of unprecedented need. That's all we have time for in this edition of Business Line. But be sure to join me again next month for a roundup of the biggest business and investment stories from around the globe. I'll see you then.